All right, and before I forget, for any viewers that stayed tuned to the end of the video, It's a sticker. <laughs> Again, you always find crazy shit when you're looking with the UV light. That looks crazy. Uh, we do have some green there. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Now, today, we continue with the epic in-depth examination of the mechanisms of operation driving the ancient Egyptian pyramid chemical engineering technology with part three, the secondary era former of the Red Pyramid. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. Now to begin, the sequence that I am about to run was first presented in part one and two of this series in episode 156 and 157, along with mathematical calculations proving the temperature and pressure capabilities of these reaction chambers that produce the chemical conversion of methane gas and water into hydrogen and carbon monoxide within the primary steam reformer of the Red Pyramid. So if you are new to the channel and just joining for this episode, please go back and watch the first two installments so you can get caught up on what you are about to see. So now let's run the system to see where we concluded in last week's video. All right, now, so we have our hydrogen and carbon monoxide syngas in the upper vaulted chamber of the secondary air reformer here, where the next stage of the reaction will proceed. With the hydrogen and carbon monoxide syngas and oxygen and nitrogen from the air reacting to produce hydrogen, nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. This mechanism of introducing air which is already in the chamber, provides the nitrogen for the final ammonia synthesis and oxygen, which will allow the effective removal of the carbon monoxide by creating water-soluble carbon dioxide. So before we get to the reaction sequence illustrations, let's go back to establishing the case for these high temperature and pressure reactions that was mathematically proven in a series of calculations demonstrating capabilities of these chambers to produce conditions of 538 degrees Celsius and 42 atmospheres of pressure. And again, if you are new to the channel, it is absolutely critical to go back and watch part one and two of this series, episode 156 and 157. And remember, exhibit A, this image 
showing the intense dark staining in the upper reaction vault and the gas flow dynamics moving from the primary steam reformer through the connecting shaft into the secondary air reformer. So now, allow me to introduce a few more images from inside of the chambers of the Red Pyramid, as it is the smoking gun for evidence of this ancient Egyptian pyramid chemical engineering technology. So here we have Exhibit B, showing the dark, nebulous staining in the upper reaction vault of the primary steam reformer, this image showing the northern face of the chamber here. Next, Exhibit C, the southern wall of the primary steam reformer with even darker staining in the upper vault, direct evidence of these high temperature and pressure reaction conditions. And a few more images of the same area here. And magnified so you can really see up close the staining in the upper reaction vaults. And I'll be coming back to the staining and chemical analysis later in this series. Next, I pulled the original image of Exhibit A, the doctored version that was published by John Romer here on the left, and the original black and white frame on the right, clearly demonstrating the reaction dynamics of gases flowing from the upper reaction vault through the connecting shaft into the secondary air reformer exactly as I have previously described. Now, into the secondary air reformer with exhibit D, showing the exact same type of staining like we saw in the primary steam reformer concentrated into the upper reaction vault, the area that experiences these high temperature and pressure conditions. And finally, exhibit E, another old photo from inside of the secondary air reformer, this one showing the southern wall. This area is now completely covered with the modern staircase that gives access into this connecting shaft toward the final synthesis chamber. And the drain shaft at the bottom of the secondary air reformer is visible down here at the bottom. And I'll be showing in just a moment that the most intense staining in this entire system is concentrated up here on the southern side of the secondary air reformer upper reaction vault leading into the connecting shaft. And there is a very specific reason for this that will now be revealed. So here is where we concluded episode 157 with the hydrogen and carbon monoxide in the upper vault of the secondary air reformer. But for those of you that have been paying close attention, you may remember that there is something critical that we need to include in this diagram. So let's go back to episode 89 missing components from the Red Pyramid and these bilateral housings on the sixth tier of the reaction vault that I have proposed may have been anchor points for a heat exchanger baffle system that allowed the unidirectional airflow of gases while reducing their temperature as they moved into the final synthesis chamber. And I also highlighted how every single diagram of the Red Pyramid has the configuration of these housings incorrect. There are not three on each side. There are only two. And unless they have been completely covered to the point that they are absolutely indistinguishable, there are zero housings in the primary steam reformer. Just go back and watch any of the Sunday site visit footage from my many visits inside the Red Pyramid so you can see it for yourself. And in episode 99, high temperature reactions inside the Red Pyramid, I showed this area, the upper southern side of the secondary air reformer, the area that displays the most intense and concentrated staining of the entire system. And sample number 59 taken from the black material from inside of one of the housings and the elevated concentrations of lead and zinc whose melting points are 372 degrees Celsius and 419 degrees Celsius, respectively, which perfectly fall in line with the temperature calculations from the previous episode showing operating temperatures around 500 degrees Celsius and still well within the operating temperatures that can be sustained by these limestone chambers. So, back to our diagram here and this missing component, which, after further research, I have concluded was most likely 
a pressure actuated check valve, the various configurations of which you can see here that allow unidirectional flow of fluid, either gases or liquids, once sufficient pressure has been reached to open the valve mechanism. And an interesting note here, frequently check valves are used for pressure control. A common application is to employ them as a relief valve to protect a heat exchanger. So this missing component may have been multifunctional in this area, functioning as both a heat exchanger and check valve. And here are a few examples of check valves. Again, that allow flow in only one direction once sufficient pressure has been reached to open the valve mechanism. Pressure actuated check valves. So now let's install our check valve heat exchanger into the housings of the secondary air reformer and resume where we left off, now including the air in the chamber providing the oxygen and nitrogen for the remainder of the reaction. And the system proceeds with the exact same mechanisms of operation that have been previously explained. All right, everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video. And if you are interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, please remember to subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube so you don't miss out on the new episodes that premiere twice per week. If you want to help support the channel, check out thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. Link in the video description below. And if you want to get access to exclusive research videos, check out the Land of Chem members only channel. Now up to 22 absolutely massive research episodes that also feature some unreleased expedition footage. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. Now, back to the video. All right, here we go. So we resume filling the chamber until the connecting shaft between the first two reactors has been filled, isolating the reaction space inside of the secondary air reformer and setting the initial temperature and pressure conditions. Continue raising the water level, compressing the reactants into the upper vault, gradually increasing the temperature and pressure until the reaction proceeds between the hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon monoxide that produces water and carbon dioxide, both of which are soluble in water that is filling the chamber. So under these conditions, the side products will dissolve into the water, leaving us with the hydrogen and nitrogen and our side product of dissolved carbon dioxide in the water here, which will now be eliminated from the system. And this is exactly what we do today to remove the carbon dioxide byproduct during the modern Haber process reactions, where water is introduced here to remove the soluble carbon dioxide, leaving the nitrogen and hydrogen synthesis gases for the next stage of the final reaction. So inside of the red pyramid, we drain out the water containing the dissolved carbon dioxide eliminating the byproduct from the system. But we will see this carbon dioxide again as it is another valuable chemical reactant for the next pyramid in the manufacturing sequence. So now that the carbon dioxide is gone, we refill the chambers again with fresh water, compressing the gas as high as it will possibly go into the reaction vault, raising the water 33 feet into the chamber. Again, remember the upper seven feet from the last episode. This is as high as the water will rise in the system without activating the northern pump shaft that you can see here. And as these reactions have been running, this pump shaft has also been filling with water that is being pushed higher up the shaft due to the internal pressures. So we have an immense column of water here that will be very useful to drive these reactions. The full explanation of which will be coming in a focused episode on the external reservoir and northern pump shaft mechanisms. So we activate the pump shaft, enabling the water to be compressed even further into the system, increasing the pressure and opening the check valve, allowing both water, hydrogen, and nitrogen to flow into the final synthesis chamber. 
and as the pump compresses more water into the northern shaft, the water level will continue to rise, pushing the bubble of gases through the connecting shaft and into the final synthesis chamber. So now, let's run the full system so you can see the entire reaction sequence in action. Hell yeah, but we're not done yet. There are still three more parts to the series on the Red Pyramid, including the final synthesis chamber, the external reservoir and northern pump shaft, and the grand finale, the staining, catalysts, and electric fields. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, and remember to click that little notification bell so you don't miss out on this week's Sunday site visit as we return to Dashur to investigate the reaction chambers of the Red Pyramid up close in person. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 158, the Ancient Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Engineering Technology, part three, the secondary aeroformer of the Red Pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 103, from inside of the reaction chambers of the Red Pyramid. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so if you haven't already, Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and remember to click that little notification bell so you don't miss out on the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, share, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel and get access to exclusive research, check out The Land of Chem members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. Links in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram or on X, my handle is at The Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, Please go subscribe to our three other channels, Ancient Odysseys, Let's Go with Lex and G, and the best channel on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, all you cat lovers out there. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you. next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.